I'm going to discuss uh, three strategies to estimate causal effects. And uh, this is based on a book by Winship and Morgan uh, called Counterfactuals and Causal Inference. Now, the first method is uh, what we usually do in economics, at least, um, and this is conditioning. So the first method is, is based on conditioning. The second method is based on um, natural experiments using our exogenous variation. Exogenous variation. This is something called uh, instrumental variables methods or, or uh, natural experiments. And the third method is based on isolating the mechanisms. So these are the three methods that can be used to, to estimate causal effects. And in order to understand them, uh, I want to draw a graph here. So we'll just draw a graph. Let's say you have three things, A, B, and C, and they will affect something, which is the treatment, what's called the treatment D. The treatment could, for example, be the amount of drinking a person does, so drink. Now, how much you drink will affect, or whether you drink will affect the outcome, Y, which could be life expectancy or blood pressure or um, whatever drinking effects here. So let's say it's blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is also affected by other things, of course. So you can have two things here. You could have um, F and G. These are things that affect blood pressure. And what you want to do is to isolate the effect that drinking has on blood pressure, for example. Or in more general terms, effect of a treatment variable and outcome variable. Now, in this setup, we can also assume that there's some background variables. Um, there's a variable that is behind both A and F, and let's also assume that there's something behind A and B. Now, the question is, given that this is the causal diagram, what do we need in order to estimate the effect of drinking on blood pressure? Well, it turns out if you, if you want to use the strategy of conditioning, all we need to do in order to isolate the effect of drinking on blood pressure is to take away the effect of all the other variables. You see, for example, A here. A will affect drinking, but it will also affect blood pressure directly because A will affect F, which will affect blood pressure. So we have to take away the effect that A has. And that's what we do when we do conditioning in normal, um, when we do regression analysis, for example. So all you need then is um, to take away or close down all the back doors, meaning all the ways you can go from D and get back to Y. So you will do something like this. You do a regression. Then you say you want to have the, you want to know the effect of D, which is the treatment variable, drinking, for example. And then you condition. You, you, you control for the effect of A and B, beta 2, A, plus beta 3, B. And now you have isolated the effect of drinking on blood pressure because you have control for the other variables. You condition on them. So this is one way of isolating causal effects, and this is the, the approach that many people take, and this is what we, we're used to, at least as economists. Um, you should be aware that, first of all, it's not the only method, and second, it's not um, necessary to condition on all the variables. You can even do this if you only knew F, because if you condition on F in this here, instead of conditioning on those variables, you could say plus beta to F. That would actually achieve the same purpose, because now we're still closing all the ways of going from D and go back to blood pressure here, because all A and B, they have to go through F. So if you condition on F, that's enough. You don't have to condition on A and B. So that's, that's you know, it's um, important to know that you don't have to include all the variables. You only have to include those variables that closes all the back doors, basically. Okay, the second thing is um, using exogenous variation. And this is a very different strategy than using conditioning, because now you're not trying to close all the back doors. Um, 
that we did when we did conditioning. Now we're trying to find a variable that affects the treatment variable but does not affect the outcome variable that you're interested in. And in this diagram, that is C here. Um, C affects drinking but does not affect Y directly. B affects Y because B goes through A, through F, and then Y. So if you can find a variable like this that affects the treatment variable but not the outcome variable, then you only need the information on C and D and Y, and that's all you need in order to estimate the causal effect, and you can isolate the causal effect here. So um, that's a different strategy than conditioning. Now the third strategy, um, isolating the mechanisms, then we need to change the diagram a little bit. Uh, so uh, let's take away this arrow here, and let's say there's something in between blood pressure, or something in between drinking and blood pressure. You, you know the mechanism that causes this. Um, so we'll draw the two mechanisms, for example, M and N, and they, again, will affect blood pressure. So now you know the causal um, mechanism, or you know the, the variables that are in between drinking and blood pressure. In that case, all you need to estimate the effect of drinking on blood pressure is this set. You need D, M, N, and Y. Now, you see, Based on the three strategies here, you need different kinds of information in order to estimate the causal effect of B and Y. And sometimes you um, have some of this information, and sometimes you don't. So, so the choice of strategy depends on the information you have.